Today we're going to talk about stationary points and how the derivative helps us get some information about the graphs of our functions. So if f is a function and x sub 0 is a point in its domain, then we say that x sub 0 is a stationary point of our function f if f prime of x sub 0 is equal to 0. So if the derivative equals 0, we have a stationary point. On the other hand, and IB doesn't actually talk a lot about critical points. They don't talk about them at all. But a critical point is where the derivative is 0 or it's not defined. So let me explain further what I mean by that. So a stationary point is a critical point. But every critical point is not necessarily a stationary point. So if we look at, let's say, the absolute value of x graph. That has a critical point at 0, but it's not a stationary point because f prime of 0 is not defined. On the other hand, if we look at, let's say, y equal x squared, the parabola, at the vertex 0, 0, it's a critical point, and it's also a stationary point, because the derivative is equal to 0. So a subtle difference. So critical point includes or encompasses more than just the stationary points. All right, so let's look at some examples. Um, if a function has a local maximum or local minimum at x equal a, then we know the derivative is equal to 0 there. Or the derivative is not defined there. So in that absolute value of x graph, we have a local minimum at 0, 0, but the derivative is not 0 because it's not defined. But on the parabola at the vertex 0, 0, it's a local minimum as well, but this time the derivative is defined and it equals 0. So let's look at this cubic polynomial. Find all local extremum for the function. So what are we going to do? Well, we need to find out where the derivative is 0. So we take the derivative of this, which is 3x squared minus 6x minus 9, and we set it equal to 0. Now I can factor out a 3. I'm left with x squared minus 2x minus 3, and then I can factor that x minus 3, x plus 1. So my derivative is equal to 0 when x is equal to 3 or negative 1. So what I want to do is I want to make a sign chart. Let's make it in green. And I want to put those two important points there. So when x is negative 1 and when x is 3. And I'll let above the line be my x values and below the line is going to be my f prime values. Now I know the derivative is 0 at those two points. Nowhere else is the derivative 0. So that breaks this up, the number line, into three separate sections. And I know that in each section the derivative will be either always positive or always negative. Because if it's switched in between, let's say for example between, let me get an arrow here, between negative 1 and 3, if my derivative was sometimes positive and sometimes negative, then I'd have another 0 here somewhere in between. And that's because my function is continuous over that entire interval, because it's a polynomial. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to pick a value that's less than negative 1, any value. So let's say negative 2. And I want to plug it into my derivative. Usually it's easier to plug it into the factored form because we don't really care what the exact value is, we just care if it's positive or negative. So if I plug in a negative 2 for x, this quantity is going to be negative, this quantity is also going to be negative, and when I multiply it all out, a negative times a negative gives me a positive, so I know the derivative is positive when x is less than negative 1. Now let's pick a value between negative 1 and 3. I don't know, how about x equals 0? If I plug in 0 here, I'm going to get a negative amount, here I'm going to get a positive. When I multiply it out, a negative times a positive is a negative. So I know that the derivative is negative for all values between negative 1 and 3. And then finally, I'll pick a number that's greater than 3, let's say 4. When I plug that in, I'm going to get a positive times a positive is a positive. And so my derivative is always positive when x is greater than 3. Now I don't want you to think, by the way, don't just assume you figure out one of them and then it's always going to alternate. That doesn't necessarily happen. So this is telling me if my derivative is positive, 
that tells me my function is increasing. And then it levels off, and then my function is decreasing, and then it levels off again, and then it's increasing again. So by looking at the signs of the derivative, I know that f is increasing, and then levels off, and then decreasing, and then levels off, and then increasing again. So I know that I'm going to have a local maximum there. So this is going, let me scroll down. I know that I'm going to have a local maximum when x is equal to negative 1, and I'm going to have a local minimum when x is equal to 3. Now this says find all local extremum, so let's actually get the coordinates of those points. So I have a local max, if I can spell, local maximum at negative 1 comma, so now I need to plug in negative 1 into my function, f of negative 1, and I'm going to get a negative 1 minus 3 plus 9 plus 5, uh, should give me 10. So if somebody asks what's the maximum value, we would say 10. If we say where is the local maximum, you would say at x equals negative 1. And then let's find our local minimum. And that happens at x equals 3. So I need to evaluate f of 3. And that's going to be 27 minus 27 is 0. And then minus 27 plus 5, so it's a negative 22. So find all local extremum. We have our local max and our local min. They're not global maxes or mins because this is a polynomial. It's a cubic, so we know that it goes down to negative infinity and up towards positive infinity. So there's no global maximum or minimum. Let's try another example. Find all the local extremum for this function. So you're thinking, all right, same idea. Find the derivative, set it equal to 0. So we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. Set it equal to 0. Once again, we can actually factor out a 3. And then we're going to be left with x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that factors, it's actually a perfect square, so it's x minus 2 times x minus 2. So we only have one stationary point, and that's when x is equal to 2. So our derivative is 0 only when x equals 2. So if I make this again, x is equal to 2. There's my x value. My derivative value is 0. Let's test. Let's plug in a number smaller than 2, like, I don't know, 1. When I plug 1 in here, I'm going to get a negative times a negative is a positive. So my derivative is positive when x is less than 2. And then let's pick a number like 3. We're going to get a positive times a positive. Oh, we also get a positive. So what does that tell me? That tells me that my g function is increasing, and then at 2 it levels off, and then it's increasing again. So we don't have any local minimums or local maximums. But what about at this x equals 2? And what we have there is what's called a stationary inflection point. And so when the derivative is 0, we have an inflection point. It could be either be a local minimum, a local maximum, like in the first example, or it could be a stationary inflection point. So we have to do a little more um, insight into what's going on here with our sign chart to decide what do we have. Is it just stationary inflection or local min or local max? All right, let's look at one more example. 
Find the maximum and minimum values of this function on the interval negative 3 to 5. So how is this different? Well, we're going to start it off the same way. We're going to find the derivative, 3x squared minus 12x. And then we're going to set it equal to 0 to find the stationary points. I can actually factor out a 3x, and I'm left with x minus 4. <coughs> so I have two stationary points when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to 4. x is 0, x is 4, y prime is equal to, let me change colors, it's equal to 0 there and 0 there. So let's see what happens. Make a little arrow if I need that. <clears throat> let's pick a number smaller than 0, like negative 1. That's going to be a negative. Times a negative is going to be a positive. Let's pick a number between 0 and 4. How about positive 1? We're going to get a positive times a negative. So that's going to be a negative. And then we pick a number bigger than 4. How about 5? We're going to get a positive times a positive. So that's going to be positive. So that tells me if y prime is positive 0, negative 0, positive, that tells me that y is increasing, levels off, decreasing, levels off, increasing. So I know that I have a local max there and a local minimum there. So let me figure out what this says find the maximum and minimum values. So I need the outputs. So let me figure out what I get here. So at zero, when x is 0, I have a local maximum. And in my function, when x is 0, I'm going to get y is equal to 5. So this is a local max. And notice that we're just concerned with the interval from negative 3 to 5. And 0 certainly falls within that interval. And so does 4. So both of these we have to consider. If they were outside of this interval from negative 3 to 5, like let's say I wound up getting y prime equals 0 when x is 6, I wouldn't have to consider 6 because it's outside that interval. All right, so let's see what else we have. We have local max at 0, 5. Now we have to figure out what happens at 4. So when x is equal to 4, what are we going to get here? 4 cubed is 64 minus uh, 6 times 16 is 96 plus 5. So that's going to give me a negative 32, a negative 27, I believe. I did my arithmetic right. So this is a local minimum. Now, we're not ready to answer this question yet. The maximum value seems to be 5, and the minimum value seems to be negative 27. But with my actual graph, it's a cubic, I know that it's increasing, and then decreasing, and then increasing again. I'm not sure exactly where negative 3 and positive 5 are on my graph yet. So if you notice, if this is the place where x is equal to 5, that's higher up than this local maximum. So that might be my maximum value. And likewise, I don't know where negative 3, this is x equals negative 3, this is x equals 5, I don't know where x equals 3 hits my graph, so if this is the case, then that actually might be lower or less than negative 27. So I need to take those endpoints and also plug them into my function to see what the outputs are for those two values. All right, so at negative 3, I need to plug that into my function here. And I'm going to get negative 27. Uh, negative 9 times 6 is negative 54 plus 5. So it's negative 70, negative 81, negative 76, it looks like. So that's going to be, on this interval, oops, my minimum value.
And then let's plug in x equals 5, the other endpoint of my interval. And when I plug in 5, what do I get? Let's say I get 125 minus 6 times 25 is 150 plus I have negative 25. I get negative 20. So that certainly is not greater than 5. So this is my maximum on that interval. So notice one of the endpoints wound up being one of my answers. So you have to always consider that. So to answer this question then, maximum value, the greatest y value is 5. And that happened right here at x equals 0, which was a local maximum. And then the minimum value is equal to negative 76. And that happened at the end point, even though it wasn't a stationary point. And it's because I'm just, I'm restricting the domain on my function. So that's why I get that value. Um, max 5, negative 76. Okay. So hopefully that helps answer some questions <clears throat> on this. And then we have problem set from section 18D, and it starts on page 491.